Hi everyone, alongside Mike Troso, I'm Dave Giancola, and thanks for joining us for another Champions Journey. Well, the overarching theme of the 2013 U.S. Open at Marion Golf Club was a familiar one. Is this the year Phil Mickelson finally wins the long-elusive U.S. Open title? Well, for 54 holes, it looked like the answer finally might be yes. But right in the mix was a former phenom also trying to get the proverbial monkey off his back. Enter Justin Rose, a household name as a teenager who was still seeking his first major title despite a very successful pro career to that point. It was a great week for Rose. He had a steady performance and he was among a crowded group chasing Mickelson on Sunday. And like so many U.S. Open champions before him, Rose would win out with a steady, gritty performance over four days. Here's every televised shot of Justin Rose's 2013 U.S. Open title. And Justin Rose. A couple of top tens in his seven U.S. Open appearances. He's trying to cut some kind of three or four iron in there. Let's stay. Yes, it will. That ball could trickle back down that fairway. Easiest holes on the course. At 18, long attempt for Justin Rose. Well, he got it there. It's his return putt for par at 18. Another pull, and that's been his Achilles heel. He's statistically on top in just about every category, Mike, except putting. Leading in total driving third. Back to one. And see if Justin Rose picked up anything off the Kucher miss. Almost looked up on it. It's like his spine angle changed a little bit there or something. A short misses for Justin. Short par four. Justin Rose has a chance for a birdie. Up the hill. Just a little bit of turn to the left, and he sneaks it in there. So back to back birdies now for Justin Rose. Taking advantage of this easier. And over, over at the 10th, Gary. Justin Rose here. You see him playing out of the rough. Got a good angle to this whole location. Coming looking straight at it. And this look, oh, hits the flag stick. It might come back. It's going to come back. How about this? I don't know if it has enough speed, but. See, the ball does not have any spin coming out of that long grass, but ooh, if you can if you can get the flag stick to stop it like that, and the sticks here are firm because at the top they've got that wicker basket, so they've got to be strong. Well, the flag sticks are all steel, no fiberglass, so when you hit that thing, <laughs> it's going to ricochet. 
what do we call them? We don't call them flag sticks. We call them what? One out here tries to figure out the secret to these major championships and preparation wise out to 10. And that was just a moment ago, Dan. Justin Rose getting the pin with his second tap in for a birdie and shoots one over 71, playing with Matt Coot. Rose from below the hole. We'll see if he can get it there. Just getting his day started after an opening round. Plus one, 71. That's good enough. Justin Rose to even par within two. We've got a lot of players at even behind those two two under numbers. So, man, things have bunched up in a hurry here. 67, this was while we were away. Justin Rose straight up the hill. Very nice, Justin Rose. Take a look at that now in red figures. Here's a guy who was a pre-tournament favorite. Had some run even with it. Uh, really, it's a two wood. Marion drying out a bit. Yes, yeah, drying out. That's the point. Is he's starting to get a little bit of roll now. This, this guy's been red hot. Yeah, and Dan, what a comeback. He was plus four at one point in round one. You know, we use that term patience and perseverance in a U.S. Open. So obviously, Justin Rose. Is Should come back to the right. Three in a row. Oh, oh, putt. That was just beautiful. From 32 and 42 years ago in the previous two U.S. Open. So Lady Marion is holding her own. And a good two putt there for Justin Rose. So he'll remain at minus one. In this golf course today, Gary and Johnny set up at 6,901 yards. Open. Over the fourth. Second shot for Rose. It's 32 with the first three. This is that blind second shot. It's only about 18, 20 yards wide, and you need to hit the fairway, Justin, and you did not. Sitting up better than I thought, though. That's actually a great break. This guy, Justin Rose, who's in the thick stuff, though, at the par 5 fourth. And it's sitting up, which really helps. I mean, that was a good break. You should be able to get it on there for a birdie putt. Safety over the hazard. And has himself a look. Nice shot. To five where Justin Rose starring as round one's Luke Donald. He is uh, two under today. This is his second shot. So Justin Rose, I mean, we see just three players, Roger, here really midway through the after early in the afternoon session under par. Well, Marion has provided a stiff test to this point and uh, you just can't emphasize often enough that it, it's only going to get tougher. It is not going to get easier. We've got a pretty good breeze blowing this afternoon. Uh, green's firming up a little bit. It's just playing hard. Perfect tee shot here by Justin Rose. Let's see by that finish, probably trying to cut this ball a little left to right into the wind and against the slope, which is from right to left. This will fire this way all the way. That's fine, but it's going to leave a very slow uphill putt, but not bad at all. It's very acceptable. 5 and 18 playing the toughest now. It's on the golf course right now. Justin Rose for birdie to bring him three under for this round. Two under for the championship if it drops. A slow one up this hill. Hard to get it there. Huge amount of grade from right to left. That. Now quickly over to five. Well, Justin Rose now has this for par. Oh. I, don't believe, I don't believe he thought that was in. <laughs> but it hung <laughs> up. <laughs> right now, very nice. The weatherman's cooperating, and then you guys have to right. enjoy it, Mike. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Let's go back out to six. Oh. And Justin Rose. Up. This is all going wrong. Look out. You see what Rose has got to deal with here. Carry the bunker, lots of green to work with. 
Oh, that's pure. Folks here in Philadelphia like it, and well they should. It'd be difficult to do any better than that, or, or reasonably six. Par putt for Rose has to be careful. Speed you see, it runs by. Struggled this year at times with his putting and his confidence with it. Turns 33 later this summer after the Open Championship. Still looking for that first one. And the long birdie putt for Justin Rose. There you see up the slope there. Flattens out, then comes back up another slope. Pretty good. Number eight, Justin Rose, second shot. He's one to the left. A couple of full shots ago. One of the prettiest looking second shots on the course as far as being just appealing to the eye. I just went through a uh -huh. uh, difficult fourth, the par five, kind of a, I mean, a really dicey looking sixth hole hitting into that green seven. At two, but able to get back with eight straight pars to have himself one clear of Horschel. Hey, look, it's Justin Rose to get to one under par. Phil's made two bogeys this week. They're both three putts on the first hole he played to start the day, so that's pretty solid. And Justin Rose, who's actually played beautifully, got off to a pretty bad start yesterday. He's turned that way around and getting himself right in the thick of things here. So Rose joins Horschel in second. Just Class players on the leaderboard here. Justin Rose, one of three, under par. One under for the championship, two under for the day at the par three today, playing 219. And we've seen it play Havoc with, well, Stricker dodged it, but of course he played Havoc with that whole group beforehand. Right, one of my very, very favorite golf swings on tour. Just functionally so solid. Angles are so good. Club's so on plane. It's so many quality shots. He does. He just, I love watching him play golf. And Rose has this to tie for the lead. Should go to his left. Yeah, solid play though. Good, solid three. This is Justin Rose. Swing that Roger and so many enjoy watching. It's going to come back a bit. Be up the hill. Question will be pace. Can he get it there? Far tougher putts for far higher scores. For Birdie and the share for Rose. Mentioned getting it to the hole. Not quite. Now back over 11 second for Justin Rose. Matt Kuchar has already hit it in the water. Can you imagine if he was a backseat driver in your car to 11? <laughs> Rose for Bernie. Pretty simple putt. Slightly down the hill. And you see losing it left. Three-way tie for the lead. He's one of them. He's still is two under today. Beautifully. There aren't many players who can control a golf ball as well as Justin. Yeah. 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 Plenty of people picking Justin Rose statistically the best at total driving. He's up there in greens and regulation statistically. The putter's really the weakest link, but he's not awful with the putter. You know, it's uh, 
if he begins to run the tables, Mike, you know, he can be as hot as anybody with that flat stick. Gross leg in green to regulation last year and currently leads to total driving the combination of driving distance and driving A lot of credit to Matt Schaefer in his 11th year here and his crew and all the work they've put in. Matt had worked with uh, Paul Latshaw, very well known for his time and great work at Augusta National. And boy, this place is showing all that hard work in spades. Rose on the tee of this par three. Cuts this follow through off, nice short punchy follow through. Yes. Put it up in the air pretty high. And that's okay, that's really well controlled. And a little bit on the Aston Rose for the outright lead on this birdie attempt. Closest to the pins we had both day. This afternoon, I haven't seen it that many. as many. Now, Justin Rose surveys it at 14. Get into the big stuff. Now Justin Rose for the outright lead on 14 with a long birdie try coming up. Let's see, we'll have to putt through a trough and back uphill. Down through that valley. Up and then left. Okay. Pretty good effort. Yep, good up. So we got that for par and remain tied with Stricker and Porsche. To 16. To 15 and rose from the rough shore of the bunker. The gouge out. Got a bit of a jumper. Hang on. That'll be a quick one. Yes, it will, Raj. Put the circle around the whole location. It would be ideal here. Inside four feet, I think you'd have to be happy with. Go! Go! Keep creeping. We're, we're borderline happy. We're, we're, it's, yeah, we're borderline happy. We're, we're still a little concerned. We're back U.S. Open second round. Justin Rose tied for the lead. There's been a bugaboo for him this year. That's a putter. Not up to the lofty standards of everything else. And now Friday afternoon, not Sunday afternoon, Friday afternoon, there is one man who is under right then you can tell back in this little shoot at the tee. Shot. Justin Rose who's even par. It yeah, doesn't see the green necessarily, but he no. gets a view of the flagstick. Well, the left side of this this fairway has been pushed in probably six or eight yards for this championship, and the left side of this fairway is the proper play in where you can see. Literally moved the width of that left fairway bunker, so it's changed a line a bunch. and the players can really feel by looking up toward the green, it's from the left. Approach was telling me this is a little six iron. Well, he's fortunate it was left because that would not have carried, but it'll be okay now. Me or Chris? Okay. <laughs> Back at Marion, in the gloaming, just 
Justin Rose for a birdie and a share of the lead. Just not quite there. The lead is one under. Surveying the scene. He is on the tee with the six iron. Actually, asked the official if how much time that there was they thought would be remaining, and all the official would say is plenty. I think maybe plenty to finish this, but not another. Just barely left to the hole to start. So, these guys want to finish 18 just as badly as Phil. Yeah, the only player in this group to uh, hit the green, and now he's got a pretty downhiller. Um, should move to his right. Downhill, down green, so it will have some good speed to it. Yeah, this is a cruiser. This is no yeah. real effort to make it. You're just trying to cruise it down to the right speed. Should it fall in? Thank you. Oh, like but, uh, speed's the issue. Like Stricker had. A little closer than Stricker. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, such a key shot here, this drive. Want to be careful. Don't want to tug it too far left. Started a lie much ball. further left. Mm, yeah. That seemed to dive in reasonably deep. Now we're hearing in the next minute or two we may have the horn, but since they're underway, they'll have the option. They have the Taipei. Now, Justin Rose, the 18. Just punching down the fairway here. Oh, it looked like it settled off the tee, and apparently it did. Try to get a wedge into this green to see if he can save Paul. Take a good look. With this kind of light, Raj, it's a field shot. Oh, yeah, I mean, totally. It's blind as well. But, Daddy, what can you see now? I mean, these, these yeah, guys it. don't do anything justice. I mean, they're, they're open their aperture, and, and it, it looks much lighter than it is. It is very dark right now. Well, it definitely becomes, as you said, Roger, sort of a field shot, but you also have to be able to control your yardage. So spot on because of the false front here. Oh yeah, this is like painting by the numbers here. This is when normal no, 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 no. tend to shine. Call Dottie shining brighter than the sun at this moment, that's for sure. That was beautiful. We'll have that for par to stay at even for the championship and one shot off the lead. All right, Tommy and Phil, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to watch Phil. Be front and center on the weekend, Raj. Now here is Justin Rose. Can you see the hole, Daddy? Raj, I'm pretty close to the green and I'm struggling. <laughs> I don't know why I'd want to hit it too, though. When you're talking about that kind of Sleeping in as opposed to getting up very early. Without a question. Seventy-one sixty-nine for Justin Rose. And he will sleep in one shot off the pace of Phil Mickelson and Billy Horschel. You, Justin, you begin the day one shot back. What's the strategy on day three here at the U.S. Open? Man, well, you know, I've got a pretty clear, narrow mindset this week of, you know, a few things I need to stay, you know, stay thinking about and stay in that sort of um, narrow framework. And if I do that, 
you know, hopefully the good golf will take care of itself and the scores will take care of themselves. But, um, you know, you've got to be patient around this golf course. You know, they, they say Thursday, Saturday's a moving day. Um, just staying still might be a good thing in the US Open. So uh, we'll see. I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to the round. I'm looking forward to the challenge that the course will present today. It'll be interesting to see how the conditions change. If the greens have quickened up, that, that might mean you've got to be a little bit more defensive with some iron play to keep it under the hole. But we'll just see, uh, you know, have to sort of adjust as we get out there. You alluded to it. So what is going on in between those ears? Um, well, not much, and that's the way I'm trying to keep it. <laughs> Appreciate the time. Thanks, Justin. All right, buddy. Thanks. Justin Rose. <laughs> Justin, now 32 years old, tied for fourth in his very first major as a 17-year-old amateur in that 1998 British Open. 35 majors later, he is still looking for his breakthrough big win. Great ball striker. Wonderful swing. This is just a little bit of a pull. If it gets down quickly, it should be okay. No problem at all here and three different distances off the tee. So Justin with the longest, 123 yards now, good angle. I have to believe this is gonna spin quite a bit, Mark. Right. That'll be just a little bit deep and left. No, nope, not much spin Coach, that is ridiculous. Really a very good shot there. And Justin Rose knows his breaks a little to the right here, Mark. And those right-hand breakers are the ones that he typically has trouble with, albeit this one much longer than he expected. Not a bad right. lag, though. Just that you have to match the distance with the line. Uh, it's very hard to do. Very hard. Justin Rose for birdie. So a three-level putt here, Peter. It goes down here at first and then slightly up in the middle of the putt and back down at the hole. A lot of players get fooled here. They think it's going to go harder to the right. And it actually hangs up and goes up here left there. And that was the downhill that he forgot to factor in. Factoring that in. Let's go back to two. This is Justin Rose for his par. And he said you just got to turn out par after par in the U.S. Open because a par will never hurt. Those sticks don't get wow. much, do they? They sure don't. It doesn't pay to be that accurate around here, I guess. As we go back to three, and Rose is second. Now, yeah, Mark, you were right. He uh, <laughs> certainly didn't leave himself the downhill left the right or left a little short. Now, Justin Rose for his par. A little right to left break. There you go. Rose, this his third, got over Cobbs Creek there, so working from the right side of the green. Oh, Will it come back? Yes. No. Oh. He got caught up in there somehow. Must have hit a little funny spot. Drying out by the moment as Justin has this for birdie at four. Just let gravity do the rest. What a nice putt. Birdie for Rose. We've got two men under par. Rose had to lay up from the bunker on this hole. 240. By the way, David Graham made the only bogey of his final round here in 1981 with a three putt from above the hole. It's got a graveyard of big scores and others. Very happy with the cross on the right. Just turn the corner. After laying up out of the bunker. And you can see that slope. That's probably 10% slope right to left where he's standing. Ball will be about five inches above his feet. Yeah, he's going to have to play this way wide right because the slope will take it left. The wind is blowing right to left. Stay there. Just a little bit, and that'll be way short. 
Stay there. Found that ridge there. Challenge at the fifth continues. Justin Rose. Rose for his par mark at five. Really had to pretty much play it as a par five after he drove it into the fairway bunker. Just don't want to make a six. So Rose's red number one's going to call with a four. But I'll put myself in your position, and I would yeah. say it's Saturday, right? Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> Saturday's starting to get where you're tightening up a bit at the end. you got to keep in position. All right, minimizing the damage is just a Rose. For him, even. And it's just Donald and Sendon. One clear of all those evens. Drive, yes, he has not driven it well. 211. I do out. not think he can get this ball back to the green. I'm not sure where that ball went. I know he pulled it, but we couldn't see where it ended up, actually. It was very high. The six is such a difficult par, par four in the fairway bunker. This is his third try to hit a big high flop. And that ball's got to get up or it's going to come back. Watch out. Yeah, there it goes. Short sighted himself, didn't he? Rose now with his fourth. Making real hard work of it right now in this third round. And these are the holes here that you just need to get through. Rose back at six for bogey, straight in. So Rose drops the shot, back to one over. Pace on for Justin Rose. It's a little slow, you see that little uh, dark grass between him and the hole? Uh, what do you think it's gonna do? It breaks left, right? It breaks left overall, yes. There's a little bit of a right hand twist sort of in the middle of the putt, but overall it's to the left. In case you're wondering, it's been 43 years since Tony Jacklin won that 1970 U.S. Open. First time this goes in just a bit short. Tap in at a D to remain a plus one. Nice par. Really a nice par in this 231 yard par three with water. Rose is looking pretty darn good. He's going to hit it an inch fat. And over here, Justin Rose played a beautiful tee shot to the edge of the green. This for Eagle. And he oh, just loses speed. He thought that was in. So Justin Rose makes birdie at 10. It's it's, yeah, gets it back to even par, two back. He's got a great demeanor out here. Wonderful guy, great attitude, and obviously, Great swing of the golf club. So Justin Rose pulls within two. We shift over to 11. This was just a moment ago, Dan. Justin Rose. 29 yards. He's yeah, getting lucky. Well, I don't think you need a whole lot of luck there. That was a, a well played shot. Right now, absolutely. And now live, Justin Rose for a party at the 11. He was plus four for the first 13 holes, Johnny. So he's now played the last 34 holes in four under par. So Justin Rose showing a lot of patience, a lot of persistence. That's what it takes to play well here at Marion. Here we go to 12 for Rose's birdie attempt. And then coming back to remain at even. Two back. As the contenders get ready to head to the quarry. A little bit. He has to drive it the hole before and then this tee shot. Remember, he's got 18. Yeah, I know. Coming up after that. But still a, still back, a back great bogey. performance. Yep. Justin Rose now at 13, where there have been 22 birdies out of 67 tries. Time to hit a good one here. Set, baby! Speed it! That could be good. Almost bad, but now good. That's a, just a straight in putt right there. It's right where you want to putt it from. Live here with Justin Rose, Mark. 
Well, this is an easier putt than the one Steve had, I think, Johnny. I don't see much break at all here. We have not seen this putt missed all day, Mark. That's how easy it is. Justin Rose has been working hard all day. Had it to red figures with his birdie at the fourth. A chance to get back there again. Sold out of the championship with this round. Justin Rose now at 14. And he hit a good tee shot. He's only got 200 now up the hill. Barely, you know, you get a little right of that, you've got the thick stuff. Yeah, I mean, look at how lucky he was. He could have been unplayable. Steve Stricker has already missed his attempt. Slow putt. Very slow putt coming out of these lows. And up again. Well positioned, just 164 yards up the hill. More than likely just a hard seven. Go, go. And that's not too bad. Keeping that under the pin. 15, Justin Rose now, this a moment ago, for his birdie and a share of the lead at 2-1. This is slow, straight up that hill. And he got it there, just got it a little bit left. Still there, back at 16. Justin Rose on the tee. Another blind shot. Players play downhill some 36 feet or so to the level of the fairway. Hitting the fairway here is very important. That's not good. Left rough. Going to have to uh, challenge the court. Over at 16, just a moment ago, Justin Rose, second shot at 194. To the hole, and we could see some of the ball, Johnny, which was a good thing for Justin because he was able to hoist that thing up. That's impressive there. And keep it on the very back edge of the green. Heck of a shot. Yeah, that's when you need a little luck when you're going that rough and have it. Decent line. a little slow as it's a little back uphill at the end. But after the tee shot, team. Justin Rose at the dangerous part three mark. Yeah, not much wind to affect this shot, just a little from the left. One place you don't want to go is the left, so he knows that. Yeah, it's not going left, but a good looking shot. Yeah, that's a very fine shot. And that rolls off the green into the primary, but not a bad looking lie. It was a little bit of an iffy lie here, Mark. Yeah, it's a sticky looking kind of lie, so he's going to take a look to the club and I think turn it down. Oh. Just got caught up in that uh, tricky lie. Yeah, we've seen Tiger do that twice, right? A little. And this one a little bit on the slow side now, but in your eagerness here, the one thing you don't want to do is whip it three or four feet by and have it coming back down the hill for a buggy. It's the par. Look towards the back of the green. That's always difficult, as Gary Cook has said, about 16. with Rose Mark from 237. Yeah, it's a big second shot here. Steve has beauty. Get up there. Might have wiped it. Yes, he did, Johnny. Oh. A serious wiper there. That's when you come down, you pull with the left. 18 from really deep stuff. It's not going to stop. That is running away from him. And so, not a good shot on the second hand. 
Rose is going to bump it out here with a fairway medal. Yeah, that's not a bad play, really. Well, especially after you did what you did back at 17 out of the similar lie, so. This one he's going to just try and pop it out, get it on the green and roll. And this is the three medal. So the contenders here, we could have a total of those for bogey. Like Megan and Schwartz, he bogey 17 and 18. Coming from red figures, he drops to plus one. But he's right there. So just the final group to finish. Luke Donald at 2.58 Eastern time. You're two shots back. Do you feel like there's a low round out there today, Justin? Well, I think Marion surprised all of us all week. At, you know, the fact that 67 is the low round for the week. And, um, you know, I got a feeling that someone may go out there and get it together. Uh, we were just chatting earlier, obviously. And, you know, we've gotten a chance to see the course now, figure out where your birdie holes are, how to play the harder holes maybe. So someone might put it all together today. That doesn't mean one of the leading groups is going to put it all together, but I think someone in the chasing pack might put it around together. You've been a leader before after 54 holes at events. You've also been in this position where you're two shots back. Which one do you prefer at a big event like this? Well, I mean, they both have their advantages. Obviously, you prefer if you were to say, hey, I'd, I'd take the lead any day because, you know, you've got to learn to go out and play with that lead. And, um, you know, it's tough to pick up shots out there on this golf course. So, you, you, you know, you want as much of an advantage as you can. But at the same time today, I mean, um, a lot less sort of thinking. I've got to go out there and just play a great round of golf. I've got nothing to lose. So that also has its, advantage. It has its advantages. But, uh, you know, I like my position coming in. Obviously, you know, the first three rounds are about putting yourself in contention. I've done that. And now it's a chance just to go out and have some fun. Good luck out there and happy Father's Day. Yeah, thanks, bud. To everybody. Obviously a very comfortable pairing here. You see David Graham in the background underneath that little tiny terrace. There he is. All the members through the years have seen the greats from Bobby Jones and on to the present day tee off from that same spot. swing isn't it just everything he does is really good looking both of these players desperately I think need a major championship they're well, too good not to have won them begin the day two back and both in good shape sort of encourages it with his smile and like he's enjoying it. So it's OK. He likes it. Justin Rose at the first from 115. Pitching wedge. Nice, nice thump there. Guys are being a little cautious, but that's very makeable. Justin got a great look almost on the identical line of Luke. Week. A little tentative, both players. They had a good chance at that hook putt. Coming down that hill, but if they lay it up short and they hit the wedge, they spin it right off the front of the green. So uh, a lot of problems here at two. But it's a par five. They should be making birdies. That's exactly what Donald did, spun it off the front. Those are the type of putts you don't want. Those little three foot downhill. It's between Rose and Donald. Rose has the power to just make a nice comfortable swing and I think he can get it to the front or at least the middle. Whereas I think Donald really had to try and manufacture something there which led to the air shot. The right bunker's been grabbing a lot of balls. This is into the I don't think it's going to cover that bunker. Not even going to get to the bunker. But, uh, figuring how strong the wind is. So both Donald and Justin Rose. Justin Rose played a very nice pitch from down below the green, but a tough putt here, Noda. Yeah, very, very fast left to right. And, and these are the putts that he's been struggling with when trying to win tournaments. Back 
the line shot over the cross bunker for 243. Justin Rose. He's going with a big long iron as hard as he can swing. Let's see if it's a good one. Just gets over. Good shot. A really good shot. Yeah, that's a dangerous shot. A little creek right there, as you can see, folks. Who reached in two for Eagle. This group kind of needs something good to happen. Both coming off bogeys. Donald's going to make another one here. Goes left. No, not bad. Should pick up the. Back up to five. This is the tough par four. Just earlier, Justin Rose making it even tougher out of the bunker here. Hardest hole in the course. This one and 18 are about neck and neck for difficulty, and that leaves himself a very difficult uh, little half wedge. The par four, fifth, and the third for Justin Rose. Green big time right to left break. Preferably, you'd keep it left of the hole. Uh, that will trickle quite a bit and leave himself on a huge break left or right. I mean, you're really better off on the right side of your screen there, putting up the hill. Look how far out Justin Rose is playing this par attempt. The screen is, you know, close to illegal. Uh, it's being mown, uh, mown slower than the rest of them just because of the sand. Up to six. And this is Justin Rose for birdie. Big swinger across the green. Thank you very much to Justin Rose. Back to one of them. Justin Rose at seven. Position nicely off the tee, 147 yards. Looking for it to get down on. It gets just up on top of that little ridge behind the hole. Back at seven, Justin Rose. It goes downhill initially. Back a little bit uphill at the end, should move to the right. Oh, there he goes! So Justin Rose to even par now, tied for the lead. Came here last week to work on his game and then back earlier in the week to uh, just. Second for Justin Rose today, trying to keep this going. He's made two big putts at six and seven. Two players under par today in the last 12 pairings as Justin Rose won. Justin Rose at the eighth, Nota. Very lucky for this ball not to pitch over the back of the green about another foot and a half. And he rolled down the back slope there. Has an extremely delicate putt. Breaks pretty good from left to right, but speed is, is critical because it will try and get away from him. so much great putting it. Hit the ball on the fairway off the tee as we go to eight. And Justin Rose for par, not it. Straight up the hill, a little left to right. <laughs> Just cold around it in. Yeah, that didn't have to go in. That's a little, it's got a little momentum right now. It's a little magic. Yeah, yeah getting a little bit stuff at the hole before last. Johnny, I don't think they can take it at this whole location. I don't believe there's enough room between the far edge of the bunker and the hole. If it does take that line, it will pitch over the back. So what's the wind doing right now? Because there is wind. Yes, the wind is kind of swirling, but for the most part, coming off the players right, helping. So it's a good wind for the hole location though, right? Yes, if they get, get the ball turning a little bit right to left, they can land it, as you referenced earlier, about 20 feet right and have it released back to that hole, try and get it somewhere around pin high and put up to the hole. Just only one birdie today, I guess that goes to your analysis of this hole, uh, noted uh, by John Senden. So it's more of a par hole today. Uh, of all the holes you're playing, seven through 13, this is the one hole that you just want to make a par on. The rest of them you can concentrate on getting a birdie. 246 is the yardage. It is downhill. Justin's got a six iron. By the way, 
the same club that David Graham hit on this hole making par on his way to the championship in 1981. Yeah, they're on the tee down below. Yeah, we're playing 195 back then. Nice line headed out the center, but it is falling right. In fact, Mike Davis, executive director of the USGA, had a new tee created to mimic the clubs most players hit into that green in 1981. Justin Rose, Nota. I often found when my nerves started pumping, had a little bit of adrenaline, these uphill lag putts were very difficult to get to the hole. This is a very slow putt, not a lot of break to it. Justin Rose with his second. Try to duplicate what Luke did. Couldn't pull the string quite as much as Luke, but still got a good look at Birdie. Birdie hole, so you don't want to go by here without a Birdie if you can help it. And note that this putt should slip to the right. Ever so slightly. And it does present downhill, but I don't think it's as fast as it looks. Easy par for Justin Rose here. I'm sure, he's going to do it 18, but it's not going to be that bad. Back at 11 with a leader. Playing an iron, just trying to get the ball in the fairway. Another blind shot. Players play over the hill, can't see the landing area. That is one smooth golf swing. Yeah, it really is. Getting ready with his second shot is Justin Rose. Gary, he's got 109 yards. He did put an extra wedge in the bag this week. Has a total of four wedges, so you won't catch him in between yardages. He won't make a full swing at this. Spin. Just slightly less. Spin. 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 It's okay. Safe, but we're at 11. Yeah, Don, I uh, said that Justin Rose was going to have a speedy putt down the hill. Learn much from Luke Donald. He powered it about six or seven feet by. It's now for par. Back up the hill, he leaves it short. Three putt buggy. All swings are tied. Today he said it has the makings of something special. Over at the 12th off the tee is Rose. And he does have enough length to reach those bunkers on the left. Can he need to cut? And he has tugged on this. It's down the left side, trying to work its way back. It's okay. He's got a big bank turn this hole, like Talladega. And for that bogey, he'll stay at plus one. Over to 12, second for Rose. Good chance for Birdie here with those sideboards. Got to get it up to the hole. It's going to be a test. Here it is. Yep. It's going to be a technical for Justin Rose. Tie him is Rose. And now it's Mickelson and Rose atop the board at even. And Justin will have another good chance, you would think, across the road at the 13th. And Justin Rose, Noda, you're right there. Right here, he's got his 52 degree wedge. Sets up really nice. Has to land it just past the flag and use that backboard. Kick in the north! And he's come over this and pulled it right to the middle of the green. Seemed to be bothered by someone in the gallery there. Yeah, irritated. Tied for the lead of the U.S. Open. Rose's birdie attempt.
this kind of has the feel of the Ryder Cup nine months ago at Medina. Remember Justin Rose and Phil Mickelson locked in a crucial match on Sunday singles. Mickelson oh! was up as they came to the 16th. Justin Rose's par save there at 16. This was the bolt of lightning that really shook Medina that day. A tense Ryder Cup Sunday. And Rose knocked it in for Birdie to score the match with Mickelson, who is still one of his biggest fans. And then with a cup in the balance at the 18th, Justin Rose in the last two holes and beat Mickelson one up. green by the clubhouse. And back into the wind, it makes it even tougher. Well, he a good swing on this one. This is right down the middle. That is really important right there. In 99, looking for the big one here today at 14. Rose now getting ready. See those slags way up at the grandstands, no to, I guess, left or right and into. Yes, it's definitely coming in, and the rain is starting to come down a little bit heavier. He's got 207 with the uphill and the wind, Johnny, plus the rain. It's probably playing right around 225 yards. Can only see the very top of that wicker. Better get it to the green. Just gonna flush it. Was he late? Yep, he was late to the party, and it's way right. Yeah, you could see it coming down. He was late, late, late. But that sand is really nice when it gets a little wet. You can really spin it. So, not impossible. John, I got to think that jacket was bothering him a little bit. He pulled it off. He's got an extremely fast putt. Get in the hole! Is he going to do it again? No, it's a very fine cut. But a bogey here is not going to knock you out of it. Yeah, the tee is, is back just a little bit today, which I think takes the driver completely out of your hands. You see those three fairway bunkers down the right. We just want to put this in the fat of the fairway. And the fairway is only about 25 yards wide, so it's a skinny fat. They're going right again. Yeah. He's really good. He likes this one. Now that's laid way back. But he's a very good long and mid iron player, so he's playing right into his strengths. Should be looking about 15 feet left of this wicker. Yep, right at the uh, camera tower that you see behind the green. Hey, good. That's exactly the line that's hey, good. on right now. It's going to trickle back a little bit, but that is a speedy putt, although with all this rain, it's going to slow the green. For U.S. Opens, uh, Johnny, Jason Day is one of them. And we're going to see if Justin Rose has what it takes to try and finish this off. And Justin's got a very makeable putt here at 15, note up. He has played this hole very, very well. Executed the last two shots almost perfectly from a strategical standpoint. And Peter, you referenced earlier that this is just a very, very fast putt with a lot of left to right like break in it. There's some more putt on, on 13. Justin Rose said earlier in the week, you've got to churn out par after par after par, and there's another one. So Justin Rose stays one. Justin Rose, conservative with the iron. Nine tee shot, like downhill, see the landing area. He's got the first part of the equation done nicely. Middle left. 
Hard to get it on that little shelf. And if it comes up short like that, it will funnel all the way back down into a low area. That was close to a terrific and shot. Is within a few feet, Johnny. Within a few feet now. Not an easy two putt. Steeply uphill. 16. And where Justin Rose has this lengthy putt for a birdie out of this low area and steeply uphill. Leave this short. Oh, we gave it a good wrap. A good wrap. Whoa, whoa. Man. Got a little turn at the end, too. It is tough grass. Back at 16. Let's watch Justin Rose's reaction to that putt racing by the hole. He couldn't believe that he hit it that much too hard. Have you been watching this? I at have, all? Johnny, and it actually goes back to the left, back toward the middle of the green, and most players have not read enough break. I hope you watched the end of that putt because it moved right pretty good. Kind of like that. It was a good putt, but he misread it. Yeah. Three-way tie now at the top. Mm. That second shot was awful it good. Was, it was within a few feet, Johnny, of being. You couldn't do that. And Justin Rose with two bogeys in the last three holes, trying to keep it together on this tough finish at 17 and 18. Got a five iron in his hand, 229 to that back right hole location, trying to land it right in the 220 area and let it release back to the hole. It's a big five iron. Still big, folks. Oh, someone with some Velcro. Well, there may not be any gallery back here, but there's a whole heck of a lot of media, and some of them are moving around a little bit. Getting down to these final few holes, U.S. Open champion is going to come out of one of these final four groups. Sticky, you could hit this heavy. This would have been a good one to put with that three wood or five wood. Very good break though, Johnny. It is uphill and he can be aggressive. And if there's any time you just want to have a little bit of margin for error, it's on the 17th and 18th here, Marion. Not much break, pretty easy. a fine tee shot. No, no. Contention, but here is Justin Rose. It has been 68 majors since an Englishman last won one. It was Nick Faldo at the 96 Masters. There's been so many good English players, Luke Donald, Poulter, Westwood, Paul Casey, and now Rose has a chance. The most important tee shot of his life. And he just has to block out the shot that he just saw. Focus on his swing keys right now. This is down the right side. Don't know if it's going to catch the fire. It needs to work its way back a little bit. It is fine. And how about that? Over for Justin Rose. He's got the exact same yardage that he had on 17, 229 to the hole. I'm sure he'd like to hit the exact same kind of shot. Rose at plus one. Got the ball above his feet. Goes in behind him. Very little wind, a little bit right to left. With a makeable birdie putt at 16. Center and drawing 
if he's got the distance, it's a good shot. Is it ever a good shot? That was drilled. That's a good leave right there. That's a very good leave. Up there with a cut, um, maybe a chip. And a very fine shot. That was pure. We watched Justin Lewis very first European title back in 2002 before he passed away from leukemia later that year. And it's Father's Day here in the United States. And that was Justin Lewis and he credits his game and his passion and his love for golf. It all starts and ends. This is a very, very smart play here. I think to be able to hit the ball flush and uh, just get it up there within two feet. That second shot he hit was almost impossible to get it close. That's about as close as you can get it almost, unless you hit a one out of 100 because the green goes away from the players. I agree, Johnny. Anything to take the nerves out at this point, and he's got the exact same lice, just a little bit more uphill. Just has to be careful not to get too much loft on it. This was left in the progression for Justin Rose, a major championship. Fighting back tears right now. He is. What a gut wrenching finish. He is. Hoping that it's good enough. After the three putt at 16, played him all week at 18. And that's what Phil Mickelson needs to avoid another close call. But no victory at the U.S. Open. And the last champion to birdie the 72nd hole in the U.S. Open to force a playoff was Tiger back at Torrey Pines. Remember that in the Rocco Mediate playoff the next day. It's happened a total of seven times over the years. Uh, okay. Tori has a par five finish, which is not very officer, unusual officer. for a U.S. Open, so it's much easier. This really is a par five, we want to know the truth. You barely made it into the fairway yesterday. Yeah, there's more wind and and the, and the hole was back on the team ground all the way back at 530. It's 511 today. First things first, get it in the fairway, Roger. Absolutely, and I got to believe this is his longest wood today, that Super 3 wood. Yeah. 
Oh, this is going left. This is going to miss quite a bit left. No, sitting up. Wow, you got it. Inside the clubhouse, this was Justin Rose watching himself on the monitor as we went to the commercial. He looked to the heavens, he and his wife Kate, and he was overcome with emotion. On the cusp of winning the United States Open, one last player to dodge, and that is Mickelson, who needs a birdie three. Roger, you're out there. And the lie doesn't look too bad, or what's it look like to the you? The lie is not bad. Maybe just a little greasy, but uh, he's going to have to aim this ball at the right bunker, greenside bunker, maybe at the right part of that greenside bunker, and hit a pretty good sized cut, Johnny. So tough shot. Yeah, I mean, you just have to see this whole location, folks. The green goes up to like a peak, and then it just runs away, and the the hole is on the downslope where you almost can't get it close. I mean, it's unless it just happened to stop at the top of the peak and then just trickle over. It's it's uh, that's why Justin Rose shot probably to you viewers didn't look like it was that great, but it was terrific. Uh, what is it just up top? Well, he's at the point now. He needs kind of a miracle, really. Yeah, he does. Because he's going to have to do a little bit of chasing, right? Yep. I mean, it'll, it can land on the front of the green and chase up to the top, and then it's almost got to pause and then go over to get that birdie chance. Unless he makes one of his fill chip ins or sand shots in the hole, which is not out of the question either. Excuse me, I misspoke earlier. He's got 224 to the hole. think he's got to get the low one with some check on it. Yeah. And then I'll let it release past that break. That's my thought anyway. Wouldn't surprise me if he did that shot or the higher one. I think he's practicing the lower one as you're calling. Back in the stance. He's going with the spinner. Driving spinner. U.S. Open champion at Marion. His wife Kate was Come on, the day in there, so it came a little later the news for Justin. All that hard work and gorgeous swing and technique paid off. Oh, that's a great feeling. Has won the U.S. Open champion, Chip Marion. Only player in the final 10 pairings to avoid an over par score today. You bet he earned it. Justin Rose got it done today. He began the day two back of Phil Mickelson's one under lead. And this got things rolling for Birdie at the sixth. He was caught off two bogeys in the last three holes. And this is the kind of up and down stretch of the golf course that Rose was able to survive. And then this birdie putt at seven. Look at all the wiggles on this. Didn't look like it was going to get in until the last second. <laughs> so Rose goes out in one under 35, pars 10, bogeys 11, and then hits this second shot at the par 412. And back to even. And then at the little par 3 13th, where Mickelson had his problems, Rose for birdie. Rolled this in confidently. Look at all the speed of this putt. And gave him the lead by one as he went over to the tough holes. And then here at 18, plus one, one shot lead. Most important driver of his life. And you see how far that right side was at the target. 
Just a wonderful two shot. A lot of pressure there on him when he uh, delivered. And so he got the first part done. This just as important. This was ripped up there. Again, the right shoulder pointing right at the target. Just fired it down the line. And that was a fantastic golf shot. Just an impossible to stop it almost. But leaves himself that nice uphill little uh, bump that he did with the three wood metal. Uh, it's a good, smart play to uh, put it with this fairway wood. And remember, he had with Luke Donald having his uh, problems on that one. He had to wait for that second shot. That was a lot of time to sit around and think about. You know, Ben Hogan came to mind and all the players who are so aware of the history here at Marion. You saw Justin Rose checking out some of the pictures on the walls inside the clubhouse and he is about ready to come out as he comes out with Glenn Nagel, the president of the USGA, about to be recognized as a part of that Marion special class of champions here. The 18th USGA championship played here. There's Mike Davis, the executive director of the USGA, he set up the golf course as the USGA brought this championship back to this quaint little gym in this neighborhood in Ardmore, PA. That's just what Rose needed a major championship because he's got the game. And look at him. He is so happy. Cannot get much happier than that. It's his fifth win on tour. First major. You get the sense, but just as in coming out, he is just one of the most well-liked gentlemen out here. Thank you. Tour. At uh, plus two, uh, Rose's par might not have been quite so easy. And shaking hands with all the guy, Buddy Marucci, big figure here with his championship, Walker Cup captain here, Tom O'Toole of the USGA, and just about ready to become reality. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. My name is Glenn Nager. I'm the president of the United States Golf Association. We hope you enjoyed the excitement experience of the 113th United States Open. With it. With a heritage that dates back to 1895, the United States Open is a unique championship. It remains a showcase for the greatest skills in the game to test the finest players in the game, their shot making skills, their physical endurance, their mental endurance. Some questioned whether or not Marion's famed and formidable East course could still provide that test. Well, she's clearly spoken. She can, and she did. <laughs> Justin Rose's victory this week is an extraordinary accomplishment. He richly deserves his place in the rich history of the United States Open and America's national championship. Justin becomes the fifth player to win the U.S. Open here at Marion, joining 1934 champion Olin Dutra, 1950 champion Ben Hogan, 1971 champion Lee Trevino, and 1981 champion David Graham. Justin, for your victory this week, I have the honor of presenting you with two distinguished awards. First is the Nicholas Medal in recognition of your victory and the place that you take in history with four-time United States Open champion Jack Nicholas. And second, I have the honor of presenting you with the United States Open trophy the time-honored emblem of our national championship. All right. Justin, congratulations. 
you were very emotional after holding out at 18, then when signing your scorecard with your wife, Kate, alongside you, to the extent that you're comfortable, what were those emotions about? Well, you know, it wasn't lost on me that today is Father's Day, and uh, before I get too emotional, you know, happy Father's Day to all of you guys out there, and, uh, you know, I think, um, you know, a lot of us come from great men, and we have that responsibility to our children to show them what a great man can be, and that was my goal today, just to sort of carry myself in a way that I could be proud when I came off the golf course, and, you know, for it just to all to work out for me <clears throat> on such an emotional day, you know, I just couldn't help but look up to the heavens and think that my old dad, Ken, had something to do with it. You burst on the scene as just a 17-year-old at the British in 1998. Great things were forecast for you. And eventually, you put together an excellent career. But this was your 37th major start before the breakthrough. Had you begun to wonder if it would ever happen? Well, yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, um, I, I hadn't really given myself many great chances and uh, took a lot of sort of encouragement from Adam Scott, great friend of mine, wonderful golfer, and I kind of saw how he's gone about playing major championships. And uh, he sent me a fantastic text message after the, after the Masters when we were sort of going back and forth. And he said, you know, your time's coming soon. And he's a, he's a wise man. <laughs> Much has been made about the glorious history of Marion. Your tee shot at 18 as you closed in on the championship landed virtually on top of the Hogan plaque, the iconic one iron shot. There's no one iron in anybody's bag anymore. What did you hit and did you notice how close you were to the plaque? You know, I did. I mean, when I came over the hill and I saw my ball lying in the middle of the, foot, the, middle of the fairway and just what a beautiful setting this is here at 18. And um, I thought this is my moment. You know, I've seen that Ben Hogan photograph from million times and suddenly it was me hitting from the middle of the fairway with uh, pretty much a good iron shot and two putts to win the championship so I just try not to get too, too ahead of myself and uh, obviously it wasn't quite two putts but I hit a beautiful four iron into the green and uh, I'm just so glad it all worked out. This moment is yours. You've expressed yourself very well. Anything else you'd like to say? Yeah absolutely. I mean uh, Philadelphia has been my town. Um, <laughs> Yeah. You know how to work a crowd, don't you? Oh, man. Um, you know, I, I had such good support here all week, and uh, there were a lot of people in the crowd who remembered me from Aronimink, uh, 2010 uh, AT&T that I won here, and I felt like I had a lot of goodwill in the crowd. And um, obviously, Phil Mickelson, rightly so, fan favorite. The way he carries himself, um, you know, I've got nothing but great sort of um, things to say about Phil. And being Father's Day, I think he needs a big shout-out for how he handled himself as a father this week with his daughter's graduation. And coming back to play the tournament and doing such a fantastic job. Again, Justin, congratulations. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Dan, as you know, Justin Rowe is one of the most popular players on tour and now the U.S. Open champion. Father's Day here in the U.S., Bob. The rose is the official flower of Father's Day. And Justin Rose got it done today. He spoke so highly of Phil Mickelson. We'll hear from the runner-up again, Phil, when we come back.